Death Beam. The US has learned how to use a combat laser from an airplane. Mankind has entered the era of hypersonic weapons. Russia and China already have missiles flying at 5, 10, or even 20 Mach's. America is desperately trying to catch up with them. At the same time, these countries are actively trying to find a shield against these weapons. One promising option for such a shield is laser weapons. In our recent video, the link to which is given in the description of this video, we talked about promising developments in combat lasers for the U.S. Navy. Now we'll talk about those developments for the U.S. Air Force. We'll also try to understand how realistic some military claims are that these weapons are about to become operational and Star Wars will become a reality. Spoiler alert, not everything is so unambiguous and rosy. First, a brief discussion of why high hopes are pinned on laser weapons. What's a hypersonic weapon? It's a combination of tremendous speed from 5 Mach or 3,800 miles per hour and active maneuvering. What is 3,800 miles per hour? The minimum speed of a hypersonic missile. That's more than a mile per second. From Times Square to the Statue of Liberty, such a missile would travel in less than 10 seconds. And for example, the Russian hypersonic rocket Dagger in 5 seconds. But for example, the Minuteman warheads also fly to the targeted hypersonic speeds. And they've been in service since the 1960s. This is correct, but they don't maneuver. They fly along a predictable, calculated ballistic trajectory. A hypersonic missile, on the other hand, is actively maneuvering and is virtually impossible to accurately calculate its trajectory. All these 10 or 20 sweeps and all these maneuvers are no problem for a laser beam. It doesn't need to calculate any prediction angles to hit it. It's just enough to point it at the target and press the firing button. With a speed of 671,080,888 miles per hour, which is at least 17,000 times that of a hypersonic missile, it will hit it in a millionth of a second. The second advantage of laser weapons is the very low cost of a shot, comparable to a cup of coffee. Whereas an anti-aircraft missile costs about a million dollars or more. Therefore, not only hypersonic missiles costing tens of millions of dollars, but also drones costing a hundred dollars can be shot down with a laser. Not surprisingly, laser weapons are now actively being developed. We've already talked about U.S. developments for the Navy, now let's see what lasers they want to put on combat aircraft. As in the case of the U.S. Navy, combat lasers for aircraft are being developed simultaneously under several programs. In 2019, the U.S. company Lockheed Martin delivered a prototype Airborne High Energy Laser, or AHEL for short, which was installed on the AC-130J Ghost Rider aircraft. The combat laser carrier, the AC-130 Direct Fire Support Aircraft, also called the Flying Battery, is one of a kind. Converted from the C-130 Hercules military transport, it has a large size and unique payload. By the way, it was previously reported that lasers would be used in transport aircraft. So judging from the specifics of the carrier aircraft, it can be assumed that the laser unit will not be small and light, to put it mildly. As the laser system is intended to work on the ground, it'll be mounted in the lower part of the plane and possibly be retractable. Such layout solutions have already been tested in old designs and prove themselves well. In its current configuration, the AC-130J Ghost Rider can provide effective fire support and hit a variety of ground targets at a wide range. For example, within a few kilometers, the aircraft can effectively use artillery and Hellfire missiles fly at 10 to 11 kilometers, for SDB and SDB-2 bombs, a range of up to 110 kilometers when used against a stationary target or 72 kilometers against a moving target is stated. At this time, it's not reported at what range the new laser hits, but the Pentagon claims that after installing the AHEL laser, the aircraft will get new capabilities. At full power, it'll be a useful adjunct or substitute for the cannons in some situations. It can be used to disable or destroy various targets and objects. However, there are no specifics. Lieutenant General Brad Webb, former commander of the U.S. Air Force Special Operations Command, described one scenario where an AC-130J armed with a high-energy laser would be used to detect and destroy electrical transformers, communications equipment, and drones at airfield parking lots. As you can see, no one's talking about destroying hypersonic missiles. And there are quite good reasons for that, but about them a little later. As for the power rating of the AHEL, the Lockheed Martin Corporation press release doesn't say specifically about this, 
but the U.S. Special Operations Forces Command has stated that the laser will be in the 60-kilowatt class. At the same time, it's been reported that the manufacturer is seeking to increase the system's power to the 150-kilowatt class. Other sources suggest that AHEL has a power rating of about 100 kilowatts. But the AHEL project, as we said, is not the only one. The same Lockheed Martin company also announced in July 2022 that it had delivered the Lance High Energy Laser Weapon to the U.S. Air Force earlier this year. Lance stands for Laser Advancements for Next Generation Compact Environments. The recipient of the new weapon is the Air Force Research Laboratory, or AFRL, which is responsible for developing and integrating new technologies in air, space, and cyberspace. Tyler Griffin, Lockheed's executive director, said the Lance is the smallest, lightest, and most high-energy laser in its power class that Lockheed Martin has built to date. Back in 2017, Lockheed Martin tested a new 60-kilowatt combat laser. The technology used by the company resulted in an average 50% reduction in power consumption compared to solid-state lasers. The U.S. Army deemed the test a success and signed acceptance documents. In the same year, the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory signed a contract with Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and Northrop Grumman under the SHIELD Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator Program worth just over $26 million. Boeing took care of the capsule and tied the system to the aircraft, while Northrop Grumman took care of the beam control system, which points the laser at the target and keeps it on until it's destroyed. Last year, the beam control subsystem was handed over to the customer, and Lockheed Martin has been busy reducing the size of its land-based laser system and solving the problem of cooling it on aircraft. Five years later, it was able to shrink the unit to one-sixth the size of the Army's. It fits in the capsule. Whether it was possible to keep the power of the Army laser was not reported. After all, it was not about miniaturizing the unit, but also about reducing the power consumption of lands. It'll not be possible to put a generator on the fighter, which is used by the ground forces. We only know that during ground tests in New Mexico, the Lance prototype shot down several air-to-ground missiles. So this problem has been solved as well. On what kind of plane is planning to hang Lance has not yet been decided. The company conducted its research on a cargo C-130. In promotional pictures, the capsule was drawn to an F-16 fighter jet, Bean tested its laserless capsule on an F-15 fighter jet in 2019. Meanwhile, U.S. Air Force pilots are already performing simulated flights with airborne laser weapons. A computer program has been loaded into their flight simulators that provide the ability to use laser weapons to repel an attack in aerial combat. The pilots are having a lot of fun with this game. There's now intense talk that the sixth-generation fighter being developed under the NGAD Next Generation Air Dominance Project will be equipped with laser weapons. Of course, a laser in a capsule is not suitable for this. After all, in this case, invisibility is out of the question. But progress is clearly visible. Lockheed Martin has managed to shrink its ground forces laser fivefold in only five years. Therefore, it can be assumed that in another seven years, by the time the NGAD fighter is going to be delivered to the military, the laser weapons will already have acceptable weight and size characteristics. But will they be able to destroy hypersonic missiles by that time? It seems to us that, alas, not yet. Here are the following considerations. A hypersonic rocket flying five to 10 times faster than a bullet has powerful thermal protection. Otherwise, it'll simply melt. The temperature on its surface reaches 2000 degrees Celsius. This is slightly lower than the temperature at which the laser beam heats the surface of the target, but the laser affects the target for a few seconds, while a 2000 degree hypersonic missile can withstand at least a few minutes. Therefore, the laser beam has to be much more powerful than 60 kilowatts. And this immediately leads to a chain of complex problems. You need energy to power such a laser, and you need a very powerful cooling system. If the laser is placed on the ship, these problems are not as critical as for the aircraft, where every inch of space and every gram of weight is taken into account. The second problem is target tracking. To destroy a target, the laser has to affect it for several seconds. That is, the targeting system has to guide the laser beam accurately to several millimeters so that it burns in the same place. Recall that a hypersonic missile flies at over a mile per second, or even two miles per second. Plus, there are problems such as laser beam absorption by fog and energy concentration decreasing with distance. Moreover, the reduction is proportional to the square of the distance. That is, if the beam from 10 kilometers will burn through the hull of the missile, then from a distance of 100 kilometers, its energy will drop by a factor of 100. 
So in essence, right now, laser weapons are close combat weapons, and even in the foreseeable future, it won't be able to detect the same AIM-120D air-to-air missiles with a launch range of 180 kilometers. Well, what will laser weapons really be like? Shortly, we'll tell you in our next video, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video.